Hey, a friend, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today, in our 30-day series of Why Logic Pro Rules, I want to dig into how to get the most out of Logic's huge instrument selection. Just a couple of ideas to help you get more out of these amazing instruments. Now, there's a stereotype when it comes to Logic that it's really the tool for the producer or the songwriter because of its MIDI capabilities, the instrument selection, And I think the stereotype has kind of carried on a little too long. I mean, if you're a beat maker, a producer, a mix engineer, mastering engineer, Logic has just about everything covered. If you work in film, et cetera. But it would be ridiculous of me to not point out the fact that there is a huge instrument collection and they're amazing. While this video is not a deep dive of the different instruments in Logic, because we'll cover some of those throughout the series, let's just quickly poke around at what we do have. Now, Logic is known for its synth selection, and aside from a whole host of legacy synths, the synth most notable to point out is Alchemy, which is a powerhouse, just a behemoth of different sounds. It comes with thousands of presets that you can manipulate and choose from based on category or style or genre. And Alchemy was actually acquired when Apple acquired an old software instrument and plugin company, Camel Audio. And now we're seeing the benefits of that acquisition with Alchemy, with step effects, fat effects, and just the versatility is amazing. I mean, if we bring up the musical typing using Command K, or we can go to Window and go down to Show or Hide Musical Typing, we could use our keyboard as if it was a MIDI keyboard. And let's just play around real quick with some of these sounds. I mean... Take some of the other synth sounds. And you can see that all these controls are mapped across this XY pad and they're adjusting in real time, but you can also adjust the controls as well or even dig into the arpeggiator or the individual effects. So again, it's not a deep dive, but real quick, just demonstrating we have Alchemy. Logic has its huge, huge selection of legacy synths that do look like they came from a different time and place. But still, just tremendous versatility. If we keep going down the line here, we have a drum synth, which opens up the world of drum synthesis, but in a very user-friendly interface. We can choose from kicks, snares and claps, percussion, hats and cymbals, different sounds within each category that you can play. We go down the scale. We also have the retro synth, which offers us four different styles of synthesis from analog to wavetable, to FM, and you can even load your own sounds as wavetables within the wavetable synthesis. Just right within here, you can create a wavetable from an audio file, it's amazing. But if synthesis is not your style, we also have more classic keys to choose from, from a vintage B3 organ to a clavinet. And there's different styles of clavinet contained within this instrument. The B3 doesn't have different styles, but it's just amazing. The electric keys, which provides us a huge selection to choose from. And a Mellotron, which I think is kind of mind-boggling. We also have a studio string selection, which is amazing. And you can see that I've picked presets within the library here. So if we go down here, open our strings, we can see a string ensemble, but we can pick from many different sections or single instruments. And we can play these entire sections. or we have the studio horns as well. I love that the Logic team is breaking out these different instruments with their own user interfaces, but but just because an instrument doesn't have its own dedicated interface doesn't mean that it's not available in Logic. In fact, let me create a new instrument here, a new software instrument, and we'll just go with an empty channel strip. And within the library here, which is accessible from this filing cabinet button or key command Y, I'm gonna go down to world, gonna choose some string instruments and we'll pick some Chinese stringed instruments. And we can see that the sampler has been loaded. This is the replacement of the EXS24. And we can see the mapping, different samples have been mapped across the keys meticulously. It's awesome. And you can also adjust the zone or the sample for each sample as well. Now, there are three areas that I want to bring to your attention when it comes to software instruments that could really open up this world for you as a Logic user. 
Number one, certain instruments allow for key switching or articulations. And these are built right into Logic if you're using a Logic instrument. We're gonna open the smart controls using key command B, but you can also use this button right here that looks like a dial on a piece of analog gear. So we open this and we, we have different options of controlling our instruments or plugins. The control tab allows us to adjust the tone. So this is gonna adjust the EQ. You can see the EQ lifting in the EQ thumbnail. We can also adjust for different key switches right here. We can adjust the ambience. So our send field is going to an instance of Space Designer for reverb. And if we select different instruments, we get different options. So this compressed vocal channel strip allows us to adjust the compression, the EQ, the sends, really in a very quick and easy way without having to dig into the plugins if you don't feel like it. Or if you're coming from GarageBand and you know it's a little intimidating, this could be a much better view for you. But what I wanna bring to your attention it's on specific instruments, we have this tab for key switches. So you can actually adjust the articulation in real time. If you are a proficient key player, then you probably are well aware of this functionality. If you're like me and you can only play one finger at a time, then this is very helpful. You could actually be performing and adjusting key switches in real time. So let's check it out. We'll just play a couple of notes on this instrument. Or we can choose a bend down. Or the glissando, which is amazing. That's so awesome. Now, if we go to studio strings, we get quite a bit more and the studio horns as well. We'll go to studio horns because we get two pages of articulations to choose from. So we could choose an expressive medium or staccato or the second page here, some doits or the shaker trill. Now, obviously all instruments do not offer articulations or key switches. If I switch to some of the keyed instruments, you're not gonna get tab for key switching. But again, if you dig into the patches within Logic, within the world instruments, the orchestral instruments, you're gonna find some different instruments that allow for key switching. Let's choose this Turkish lute. If we go to key switch, we have two different ones to choose from. Or grace note. It's awesome. And articulations are also programmable within the piano roll editor as well. So where you would edit MIDI information. So let's actually open the piano roll using key command P. And let's just squash this down a hair. And I'm gonna take this loop right here and bring it to, I'm gonna copy it to the studio strings using option, click and drag, unmute it. And we're just gonna hear this studio string patch and I'll close the library and let's take a listen to what this sounds like. But perhaps you want some of these notes to reflect different types of performances. So let's pick these batch of notes here and I'll turn this off so we don't have to hear it. And I'm gonna go to articulation and pick pizzicato and let's hear that. So a lot of versatility. It all depends on if the instrument allows for articulations, if it's built into the instrument itself. I also wanna bring to your attention quantization within Logic because there's two different styles of quantizing. It's not just hard quantize, locking it to the grid. There's also an option for smart quantization. Let's dig into just the classic idea of quantizing. And we're gonna use this piano loop right here. So we're gonna mute this guy, zoom in here, and open the piano roll editor. And let's hear the performance as intended. Now we can see in the time quantize section here within the piano roll editor, we have smart. If I go into the region inspector, and if you don't see the inspector, just click on the I at the top or key command I. And right here, we have an option for quantization. Typically, it will be in the classic quantize mode. Now, if we set this quantize either here in the inspector or here in the piano roll editor, if we set this to like 16th notes, everything's just gonna lock to the grid. Not ideal. And if you set it back to off, it reverts back to where the notes originated. So let's set this to an eighth note quantize. Okay, so now everything is very hard quantized. It's not gonna sound as it should. Okay, so depending on the style of performance, if you're a beat maker, you probably want the classic style of quantization. But if you're looking for a more nuanced style of quantizing, let's turn this off and go to the quantize field in the inspector and set it to smart quantize. 
Now, the difference between classic and smart is that smart is going to take into consideration which notes are closest to the grid values, but also the relationship of the different notes in relation to each other. So now let's adjust for an eighth note quantization value. And you can see that some adjustments have been made, but not hard pinning it to the grid. Perfect, so we're adjusting to the grid, but we're not losing the nuance of the performance. And we can actually adjust the strength of the quantization using this Q strength field. Now it always is set at 100%, so you just click and drag down to adjust the value, but we can see here that it's grayed out. So we're gonna adjust it over here in the piano roll. And you can see the notes start to adjust their relationship to each other. Now if I turn this off here within the piano roll editor, instead of go up here to the region inspector, go to eighth note, now we have Q strength, so we can adjust this and you can see the notes changing their relationship to the grid. So you can adjust and refine the strength of quantization with Smart Quantize even further. The last thing I wanna show you is that you can actually split different software instruments across the keyboard. If we select this alchemy patch here, and if I go to this section, the track inspector, so we'll close this down, and you can see that the key limit is set to C negative two to G eight. And you can also set a velocity limit as well, so 1 to 127. But perhaps we want to set this particular alchemy patch to like G, we'll say 3. And I want to record to both sculpture and alchemy. So I'm going to set sculpture here and said, and we'll set this to C4, and we'll bring up the musical typing. I'll make sure to select both tracks, record enable them. And now we're going to go up and down the octave. So if I play C3, We're playing alchemy, but if I bump up to C4, we're playing on sculpture. So now we can record to both tracks. Check it out. And now we have both the recorded performance and the alias that refers to the original recording. So you can hear the two being played across the different instruments. And so just with these three options of having key switches available to you, different modes of quantization for fine tuning your performances and the key limit function so you can play different software instruments on different sections of your keyboard, you have so much versatility in using the software instruments. And aside from that, Logic just has a huge, huge amount of software instruments from drums, drum machines, synths, keys. And we're gonna dig into some of those throughout this series. So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video in this series.